Hey guys, this is Janine from Pangolin Photo Safaris and today I want to edit the eyes of a predator together with you. It is a subtle line to make them glow but not make them stare at you. So download the raw file down below and you'll see what we can do. If you do enjoy our YouTube clips, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button just down below. You'll get notifications whenever there's something new coming out. If you haven't got Lightroom yourself, you can also download a free 7-day trial with us, which should help you get settled. Alrighty, today I want to edit an image with you where we particularly focus on the eyes of predators. It's a very fine line to walk to enhance them without making them look like they swallowed a radioactive pill. I chose quite a few images in order to go through them with you and then we're going to edit one particular image together. They're all pre-edited at this stage, um, except for the eyes, so basic exposure and sharpening has been done. So we're going to focus on the eyes. Why is predator eyes so difficult? If we have a look, we often find these half shadows over the eyes of the predators so that we cannot see the pupils anymore. Often to a point where we really have half of the eye cut through by a harsh line. That is why overcast situations are not always that bad. If we have a look at this line in particular that was shot in the overcast or in the underbrush, you'll see that his eyes are nicely evenly exposed without that harsh shadow. Side light can also be an issue because with side light we often find that we have one eye completely in the shadow in one eye half in the sun. So to try and get the same effect in intensity in both eyes becomes very, very difficult. So today I want to edit one lion and one leopard image together with you. If you have a look at a predator's eyes, you'll always find that there is a star contrast between white makeup and a black eyeliner. Sounds a bit funny, but it's true, if you have a look, the inside of this lion eye is very dark and then he's got the lighter fur just around it. And that is to make everything look and draw attention towards the eyes. If you have a look at the human eye, it's set up in a similar way. Yes, I put eyeliner on as well. Now, what I mean is our pupil is black and our eyeball is white to create a stark contrast. So. If we have a look at the face of this little guy here, it's a youngster, we have a bit of a problem with the shadow here, not too harsh. He's got quite a nice eye color, already very intense, so we're going to have to be a bit careful together here. Um, and I want to try and make this contrast just around the eye a bit more drastic, lift that shadow a bit to equalize the eyes a little bit, and maybe just pull the clarity a little bit. So what I do generally is I take the adjustment brush, I double click effect twice just to make sure that all my settings are on naught, and I zoom in a bit, I'm on one on one up here, and I'll choose a size that works for me. My A size is quite well adjusted, and I'm going to have the feather all the way on 100, and I'm not going to have my auto mask on just for now. Just now, I'm only going to try and draw the shady part. Um, you see I've overdrawn, I pressed O to show my mask overlay. I've overdrawn quite badly, so I'm going to take my eraser and just clean up after myself a little bit. So I'm literally only affecting the part that sits in the shade. So I'm going to press O again that I can see. And I'm going to pull the shadows out from this part of the eye and you see how it lifts up. It will never be equal. You will always have that little bit of light go, line going through there. But you adjust them a little bit more towards each other. And on top of that, I'm going to raise the exposure just so much that I find that the top part 
matches the bottom part the best. So I've just painted in the top part of the eye, but as you can see the left quarter is also affected. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit more, 3 to 1, so I can work a lot more carefully. And I'm going to just brush in that quarter that is also very dark. All right. You will see that even if you draw it brighter, you will still not get the same glossy color that you have in the bottom right section. However, you can adjust them a lot more towards each other. If you want to see the difference of the effect, you're going to go to your history and go back to add brush stroke and you will see when we started off how much of a difference this light adjustment makes. We'll check out the other side if you want to adjust that a little bit too. Go back into our adjustment brush. Press O for mask overlay. This is a lot more difficult because you see I can't just paint the eyelashes down. I'm going to press my auto mask and hope that maybe my auto mask will pick up on it. Nope. Colors are not having enough contrast. I'm not going to worry too much about it then. I'm going to try and clean up a little bit. Oops, that was not my intention. I simply go back into my history and I go back to add brush stroke to get it back to where it started from. Take my mask overlay off. Again, I pull the shadows out and I bring the exposure up just a bit so that the shadow isn't quite so harsh. If I press fit now, and done, I'm done with my brush strokes. You'll see the before and after. You've just lightened up the eyes a little bit. And as I said, he's already got quite extreme eyes. So normally I take my adjustment brush, I paint the whole orange of the eye, and I might raise the highlights and the exposures a bit. However, with that intense eye color, I find that he will look too fake. He will look like he's glowing, radiating from the inside. And I want to keep the natural touch. Instead, I'm going to take my adjustment brush. I'm going to zoom in again, one on one. And I'm going to take that auto mask off because I don't want it to stop at the black. I'm now going to paint both the brighter makeup of the lion's face as well as the darker side. So. I'm concentrating more on the outside than the, than the orange of the eye. I'm going to clean up the inside a little bit, clean up around here, take the mask overlay off, and now I'm just going to pull the contrast a bit stronger. I just want that, that brighter and darker colors to show a bit more. And the same I do with the highlights, just to make it white come out a little bit more. So instead of increasing the eye color intensity. I increase the intensity around his eyes. And if you have a look, it makes you look straight at the eyes. I know it's only a fine adjustment, but it really, really makes a big difference to direct the viewer's eyes straight into the predator's eyes. That holds especially for close-up shots. Further away shots don't work so well. So after we've looked at him, I want to look at this beautiful young girl here together. So if you've downloaded the raw file, as I said, I've edited it a little bit, um, the exposure as well as the sharpness. Um, so I'm just going to concentrate on the eyes. You'll see Leopards often have greenish, almost bluish eyes, and I find that extremely fascinating. But just like the lion, we've got the brighter makeup on the outside and then the dark eyeliner on the inside. Here we're not struggling with, har with harsh shadows. We have an even exposure throughout the entire eye. But because it was overcast, I find that the eye looks almost, I don't want to say dull, but a yeah, maybe a little bit dull. So I'm going to go to a two on one so I can work nice and clean. I take my adjustment brush and 
I'm going to press O for show selected mask overlay and just paint the inside of the eye. So I love that color and I don't want to make it too bright. So don't, don't, don't make it glow like this. This is unnatural. But I just want to make those eyes stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to pull the clarity. I'm going to pull those highlights a bit and you see it's already coming out. And if you want to, you can just, just pull the exposure up a tiny little bit. Sometimes we're losing color because eyes lie so deep in the shadows that you just can't pick up on the color anymore. Same with humans. If you know the eye color, you can even add a little bit of color here. Um, I find her eye color absolutely gorgeous and I don't want to change anything about it, but you could add a blue tone to it if you knew that was the original eye color. I don't want to do that. I find it fake. So I'm going to press color twice and get rid of it again. But just to show you the before and after, I take my history and I check where I added the adjustment brush and you see I just brightened up these eyes a little bit. And if I go back to the original size image, look what difference it makes. Just a little bit of glare. And just like before, we're going to take our adjustment brush again and just increase the contrast around a bit. Press O again so you can see what you're doing. So this time, you brush both, especially around the eye, both the black kayal and the white. And it's quite strong already. Um, with my initial editing, I pulled my whites and my blacks quite a bit. So um, don't do it too much, but we want to take our contrast. I'm going to go out so I can see better and just pull the contrast a little bit around the eyes. Fine, that's already too much. I'm going to pull it just about 20 points. Press done so I get rid of the spots. And you see the viewer is drawn right into those turquoise blue eyes of that beautiful female leopard. She's smilking at us here, giving us a little bit of a smile. So for leopard or lion close-up shots, predator close-up shots, um, it's very important that the eyes are intense. You can enhance them a little bit with Lightroom, use your adjustment brush, but be very, very careful. Don't do it too much. Don't change the eye color significantly. Don't make them glow and make them look very angry and very unnatural. Give it a try. Sit down the next day, see if you still like it before you put it into print or onto social media. Sometimes to have a double check the following day in different light or with a different mood also helps. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed being able to to go along with my raw files. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments in the section down below and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.